different ways. But I'm going to move us on to our second uh, speaker for this session. Um, thank you very much, Marcus. You're welcome. Thanks our second speaker is uh, Dr. Marie Davidova. Um, I find her a wonderful uh, force of nature, an international personality uh, who has worked in different fields and works in different fields and with multiple groups. She is an architect, uh, an architect, an academic, and, um, and a person who forms design learning and design practice communities and networks. She's a quite, quite um, an organizer, a maker of social uh, practice and a maker in the world. And she's going to be talking, I, I think, about ecosystem interventions. She in particular has developed a methodology called SAAP, um, Systemic Approach to Architectural Performance. And I'm handing over to you, Marie, uh, if you need to present, I hope that Paolo has made you a co-host and we're looking forward to your 20 minute or so presentation. Thank you. I'm muted, sorry. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I will share my screen. Okay. So, uh, Yes, I will be talking about uh, actually oscillating between uh, being inside and outside of the system. So I will try to uh, start here with, uh, with uh, Kenny's, uh, Kenny's statement, there is uh, nothing like the real thing. And the discussion will be about multi-centered design. And uh, through multi-centered design, uh, uh, we will be discussing about connecting uh, what is which uh, keep in mind there is nothing like the real thing and uh, what if uh, so there will be synergy between uh, between the two uh, and uh, discussing uh, non-real thing can uh, can be our imaginary things and we might believe they are happening and that will be discussed for cross species co-living and i specifically work with urban environment but uh, also with uh, with other other places so uh, uh, don't get confused the same like previous speakers i will uh, i will talk in plural and uh, the reason is i don't think i'm an emperor but uh, all of my work has been done in collaboration with many other people with many other expertise uh, the way i work is uh, uh, yeah exactly as the introduction said i am an academician i am also chair of an ngo and i uh, do practice uh, lately mainly through the ngo but i'm also a practitioner and what i mainly do not only, but uh, I do research by design through experimental studio teaching. Um, so if we talk about multi-centered design, the, the thing is, if we talk about multi-centered, when you bring to table several, several different uh, stakeholders or agents, uh, how we work is actually we ask people to First of all, map their own universe to understand uh, to understand what is their own universe, uh, which uh, they they visualize in uh, so-called mini maps, and then they start relating uh, their universes across the table, and uh, generating a giga map across relations, so reorganizing their mini maps and finding relations and fun finding synergetic solutions. We do real life prototypical interventions in, a, in a full scale, uh, which I will then get to. It's uh, something I call real life co-design laboratory. So we experiment with real life. Obviously we receive pay feedback uh, from the real life environment, which is reflected. And then uh, this, is, uh, this diagram is feedback looping all over and all over again endlessly. So this is a this is a this is a gigamap by one of my students uh, who actually had to relate all mini maps uh, uh, across uh, across our uh, design studio unit where he had to interpret each relation between uh, between different mini maps and how there can be found uh, synergy for synergetic uh, synergetic uh, 
uh, prototypical intervention in urban environment. This is, a, this is an example of how it is done in the workshop. So here are students who all mapped, uh, mapped their, own, uh, their own universe about certain topic. In this, uh, in this case, it was a bridge over the river that could be for cross species users. And then they start finding relations and through finding relations, they find synergetic solution. And then uh, they uh, make a collaborative design together. This uh, becomes more massive when we do co-design with, uh, with local communities uh, uh, where, uh, where people have different agendas and uh, different visions. And we integrate it with, uh, with uh, prototypes. People have tangible objects. They co-create those tangible objects and understand what it is. It generates interest and generates uh, more, more feedbacks from, uh, from, uh, from the audience and also DIY. I will get to that point later. So this would be one of the example of the prototype. This is a, a responsive wood insect hotel that uh, that is uh, then placed into real life and as you can see there is that alga living on it so this is the co-design with the real life environment it is inhabited by different species uh, and it coexists with the environment so suddenly you are getting outside of the system uh, get the spot to the environment you start your observa reflective observations and you can update the system uh, this would be another example where we invited the different performers. Uh, so the performers were completely free in their performance. They just had to relate to, to, the, to the prototype and uh, bring new interpretation of, uh, of your prototype, of your research. Therefore, they update your research and co-create your research in, uh, in the same time by their interpretation. This would be Blackbird that brought the new interpretation to that pavilion. Uh, which we actually realized that our intervention was very important for the ecosystem because within urban environment, pe uh, birds have um, too little uh, spots to sit on and rest. So they die of exhaustion because everybody puts, uh, puts the sticks with the needles uh, on their windows so birds don't, uh, don't sit on it and uh, don't uh, put their droppings. So uh, that's how uh, the urban ecosystem is excluding other species. So generating this urban furniture for multiple users with their own interpretation is actually very important. This is, uh, this is another example extending the habitable landscape by moss. This uh, pavilion brought a beautiful interpretation to our work. We, we got something like a uh, hundred pounds budget for this pavilion and we were asked to generate pavilion for a uh, festival. And uh, I just said, okay, if 400 pounds, we just make it out of air. So, uh, so we did, uh, and we used this pavilion from the balloons. And what was uh, co-designed with the, with the beautiful, beautiful urban ecosystem was that actually with the morning humidity, the pavilion went down. Uh, getting uh, getting uh, dew on it, and it was it was sleeping uh, at night, and in the morning with increasing afternoon, uh, the pavilion stood up and actually made the meeting point for the festival when uh, when the social events were happening. This was again uh, uh, urban furniture. Uh, again, uh, interpreted by its user, something we, we call opportunistic use. Uh, basically, you generate environment that can be interpreted by, by, by uh, whoever wants, uh, wants to use it and find, uh, find their interpretation. So it is, uh, is co-created, you are inside and outside of, of the system uh, by, by being, uh, being uh, creator, but also being, uh, being democratic. Similar, similar example when the local scouts were planting, uh, planting blooming species on uh, our structure to invite uh, early pollinators and uh, over the winter they, they co-designed those, uh, those bird food, uh, bird food uh, that uh, they were hanging over it. This would be another intervention with the insect hotel. We engaged how to actually interact with uh, with larger ecosystemic uh, ecosystemic network so 
So this is our ecologist that is teaching kids how to how to do seed bombing of blooming plants. So the pollinators who are living in uh, in that uh, insect hotel have uh, have uh, food, have uh, honey producing species, and then of course, as the insect hotel is a hotel for insects, it is also uh, just sorry. It is, it is also a fast food restaurant for the birds and, uh, and bats in, uh, in the region. So through small intervention, you can uh, do large ecosystemic change. We, having this reflection with uh, birds moving to the neighborhood, we made another event when we taught, uh, taught kids how to uh, make bird foods. Uh, uh, for uh, for uh, the the species to survive winter and so on so on. This would be a reflection from invited artists who did this augmented reality game about about interpretation of the intervention in the ecosystem. And what we learned from that demo was that they gave us QR code so that people download uh, download their app. And we realized a very great thing that uh, if we engrave uh, QR code on our prototype, uh, uh, then uh, we can actually place uh, on our website the DIY recipes with, uh, with the code uh, how, to, how to make them. So uh, our, our intervention can be much more generative, actually spreading, uh, spreading into a larger community. So by ver very small input, uh, you can uh, get quite a large generative input. This would be my unit uh, here in Cardiff. If I, if I go to the, to the website, uh, the students uh, have, been, uh, have been designing, uh, they, they made a competition uh, about their designs about ecosystemic interventions, uh, integrated, uh, integrated uh, local community in, uh, in, uh, here in Cardiff in Grangetown with uh, DIY recipes. So uh, that, uh, that has uh, spread, uh, spread all over. I will just scroll to that. Uh, uh, you can. I will send you the link to the to to uh, the blog. Uh, what we are integrate. Uh, what we are working on now is actually integrating those uh, cross species co living systems with uh, uh, economic systems. The discussion is that uh, current economic models actually they are purely dependent on the ecosystem but they don't integrate ecosystem into, into the models. So uh, we are asking the questions now, can the butterfly be pay, paid for pollinating uh, your tomato to, in order to harvest it? And if you, if you, if you pay the, the, the butterfly, can you extend the meadows for the butterfly to have a deep landscape in its neighborhood and so on, so on? This is, uh, this is actually not so naive. Uh, this is an example of the river in New Zealand that uh, got, uh, got legal personhood. And uh, the way, I mean, uh, the river itself probably won't go to court, but, uh, but uh, it is represented by Maori people who will go for court to, in order to act on behalf of the river. So it is possible to uh, integrate a blockchain system that uh, don't, uh, doesn't require a bank. When a, a dendrologist will act on behalf of the tree, the same way how we do that in our gigamapping workshops where we invite multiple expertise. So this is uh, this is already uh, pra my practice project, which uh, which I work on in Prague, uh, which is actually dealing with the system and bringing token ec eco economy into uh, the neighborhood. We are we are regenerating, uh, and uh, we are mapping different stakeholders, and then. Uh, regenerating the local system. I will go very fast through that because uh, it just you see feedback loops between uh, be between different stakeholders uh, that uh, the, and the different uh, different services each other produce uh, to each other. Uh, just there, I think I'm running a bit short of time, so I will just scroll through 
through this example, which is feedback loop of my research, there has been practice project in 2011, where I started uh, started this research uh, by by competition entry that uh, uh, had uh, one uh, one difficult task uh, to keep uh, to not not use any energy and in the same time keep a stable uh, st stable environment, and that's how I started to, to research. Uh, the responsive wood concept, uh, which is uh, which uh, is working on met based on material performance and closes and opens based on relative humidity and temperature. So you regulate uh, regulate the environment. Uh, so this is how it's breathing uh, when it's fully open. This is uh, how it's breathing when it's full uh, half closed. And what I discovered is actually that uh, if you if you grow uh, the algae on top of it, it warps. Uh, more because the uh, moisture content is uh, is lower uh, in the dry weather, whilst it it, it doesn't warp the other direction uh, uh, when uh, when the moisture content is too high. So going through that, I just want to show some examples. Uh, I have done a lot of research through historical examples. It is inspired through traditional architecture. And I dis did uh, research on semi interior spaces, which uh, I discovered uh, have always served for cross species co living in urban environment, uh, enabled, enabled uh, different, uh, different parts. So that would be the gigamaps I mapped. Uh, uh, this would be a study about people in Cappadocia co living with pigeons. So there have been cultures, and there are still cultures. This is Portugal where uh, people couldn't grow vegetables and, uh, and uh, fruit trees in the city unless they have those breathing walls that are regulating the climate. Uh, so there has been uh, cross-species co-living has been common across different cultures uh, and uh, different regions all over the globe uh, for uh, communities, uh, communities' survival. And I'm afraid we cannot survive without them. So getting back to this uh, to this uh, example, this is this is the Cappadocian uh, mapping, and uh, this would be then uh, again competition entry that is using this mapping across uh, across uh, different cultures. They have been specifically from um, extreme climates because we are now meeting extreme climates in even in the mild uh, region and that would map it into competition entry and then we get back to this insect hotel or this uh, this insect hotel where actually it is using the, the concept of responsive wood for generating diverse climates uh, th these are different chambers there are diverse climates uh, for supporting biodiversity because different species have different climate climatic preferences. So it is generating a variety of climates for variety of species within urban environment. And then I get to conclusion. This would be Gigamap, uh, quite old Gigamap when I once uh, mapped uh, different of the projects I have been uh, working on and uh, mapping feedback loops between different agents that have been involved in the performance of uh, of uh, those uh, those projects, uh, the, these are just some examples. And uh, actually, I have been uh, concluding that uh, the most benefits for uh, for other agents, the most benefits for humans as well. So uh, I would be I would like to discuss the transition towards post Anthropocene. That is uh, uh, transiting towards biodiversity and climate change adaptation through multi-centered and multi-species design. And uh, that is a transition from uh, what we call human-centered to non-anthropocentric. And this is uh, the research by design done through various feedback loops uh, that is done through ecosystemic prototypical interventions, their hyper-objective relations, and their historical reference studies. This is a transition from a young girl calls cities for people towards the participation of both biotic and abiotic agency, one of feedback looping ecosystem. And that is happening through what I call a real life co-design laboratory. Thank you. If you are interested in the field, you can scan this QR code and uh, follow my publications. Thanks. Wow, 
Thank you very much, Marie. Um, that was a visual feast of graphic uh, ver variety and creativity. Um, my wife is a specialist in early years and play and so on. So I, I recognize some of the aspects of, for example, the way very young children morph the world and change it. And you can turn a napkin or a piece of cloth into a doll or something. You can turn a fallen tree into a rocket ship or a train or anything you like. So it went from there to at the end, we, we were looking at um, a post-Anthropocene world, or let us say a new kind of Anthropocene world in which human beings live more with nature in a more integrated way. There's very interesting challenges around, for example, the question of uh, rivers. Can, uh, can you represent a river in, as, a, as a kind of person that needs to be defended in the, in the world? Wonderful. So I looked at the chat and uh, I didn't find anybody in there who was really asking a decisive question about this. But I would like to Where is turn somebody to Janos. Raising hand? Yeah. To Janos, if I'm pronouncing your name right, Janos. I've, I've emailed you so many times, um, but we've not spoken. So please, your question. Janos Korn. We are muted. You yeah. may be muted still. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, <laughs> the thing that uh, came out of this um, presentation, at least to me, is the idea of uh, interpretation for use. And um, I don't know if it's right or not, but uh, th that is a very useful idea. And the question is, uh, would it be possible to um, translate this idea into some kind of a, a methodical approach that um, can be taught and people can use for, for application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, uh, yes, I work, uh, I work, I, I mean, all my work is about methodology. What is uh, partially different about method and methodology uh, be, besides that, that uh, methodology is uh, combined of several methods is also that it's adaptive. So I, I don't think they, there can be there can be real method like uh, like a recipe. Uh, do this step, then this step, this step. Uh, I don't think at least within my work, I don't think that can that can really work. But uh, we have a set of methods and methodologies which are learning from combining and adapting. I must say I have never worked uh, the same way in, in any, of the, any of the projects and all of my projects are interconnected. But I mean, because, because exactly what is cybernetics about, because you get feedback. And when you get feedback, you you adapt your adapt your methodology based on uh, based on the feedback. So, so I don't think there is a recipe. There is a, there is set of tools. There is a set of approaches. Uh, uh, but I I think uh, I think uh, methodology has to be adaptive and actually has to be has to always adapt to feedback and develop. It would be quite boring if we would say that there is a recipe 